before Gloria or Jennifer Lopez or Selena, there was Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam. A rising star from the New York club scenes in the 1980s, Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam made a name for themselves and their songs were spreading across the world. On record and on stage, Colt Jam drew crowds from all over the world with their Latin freestyle beats and a style that was gonna take them from the lowest to the highest highs. But it wasn't all peaches and cream. Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam would soon fall apart. Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam blew up on the pop scene in the late 1980s. They made three straight gold albums and had eight top 10 singles and four number ones. And Lisa Lisa was a part of it all, from high school to a living star. But through the success that they made, the friendship, the family, the bond, Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam's relationship came to an end. And here's the story of Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam. Lisa Velez, AKA Lisa Lisa, grew up in a tough neighborhood in Manhattan, New York. The youngest of 10 siblings and born and raised in Manhattan, New York. With no father figure, her mother ran the household and kept them in line. And she would sit on the first window with a towel around the windowsill and watch us play uh, two-hand touch football across the street. Her mom was from Puerto Rico. She was a local singer and sung with a local band. When she moved to New York, she directed a local choir where Lisa Lisa exercised her God-given talent. A few miles away in Brooklyn was another inspiring performer who grew up in a musical family who was also on a path of chasing the musical dream. During his teenage years, Mike Hughes played drums with a trio of his brothers, his singing brothers. They had a group called be fine with Paul Anthony and Bowlegged Lou. Later, they would become the well-known group that you would know today, Full Force. Mike always had the idea of putting his own band together though. He ended up teaming up with this guy around the way who was a good guitarist. His name was Alex Mosley. As Mike and Alex started to link up over music, Lisa was going to school for performing arts at Julia Richmond High School on the Upper East Side. And when she wasn't doing her studies, on the weekends, she would go out on her free time at this club called The Fun House. And it was a coincidence that one day, Bowlegged Lou sent Mike Hughes out to do a talent search for a female singer. And that's where he went. He met a young singer named Lisa. And a week later, she came to the studio of Full Force and began to do her recording. Another week later, they finally came up with a track with Mike, Alex, and Lisa Lisa, along with the Full Force Connection, came this new hot single called I Wonder If I Can Take You Home. It was first released on a compilation album from England back in 1984, but then caught on to the New York club scene shortly after. And one of those clubs was The Fun House. Things was blowing up so fast that the band ended up needing the name. Mike came up with a good name called Colt Jam. And because Full Force already came up with Lisa Lisa's name, they put them all together and came up with Lisa Lisa in the Colt Jam. After tearing down the invisible charts of the club scene, Columbia Records ended up releasing this song as a single back in 1985. And following that single was a music video that showed Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam performing. And the director of this music video made sure they show Lisa Lisa performing with everything that her mama gave her. And on this video, I don't think any of the guys watching it noticed the band. If you noticed the band in the background on this music video, drop a comment below. But let's continue. So Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam, I Wonder If I Can Take You Home, ran up the charts. Because of that, music was about to change their lives. Can you feel the beat within my heart? Can you see my love shine through the dark? And this second single became the next smashing hit, completely pushing Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam to the mainstream. Ooh, ah. On 
the next single, Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam decided to tone it down just a bit with a new single called All Cried Out. It was a ballad released in 1986. Don't you know my tears will burn. And as you can see in this video, it showed a little softer side of Lisa Lisa. And backing her up with the vocals was Paul Anthony and Bowlegged Lou of Full Force. And this is where most believe the problem started with the Coat Jam. With three smashing hit singles, Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam decided to take it on the road and go on tour. It was a hip hop tour with a few popular acts like Curtis Blow, UTFO, and 4SMDs. It was really important for us, being musicians, to show the world that we had the talent to do it. There was a lot of talk around of people lip syncing, and I didn't want people to think that that's what we did. A lot of people thought we were just a regular little pop group, but we were musicians, so it was good. What's going to happen in the next six, eight months of your life? Touring. And then the video. Another video. Lisa, Lisa, are you a happy lady? Very happy lady. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Lisa and Coke Jam. She was definitely happy because she was the icon, the prize of the whole group. It almost seemed like the record company used her more than the rest of the guys as a branding and marketing tool. During the tours, they had fun while performing. After the shows, not so much. Well, not for Lisa Lisa. But the guys, they had fun. Lisa Lisa stayed indoors. I was like the baby sister. Like everybody was there to babysit me. Right after the show, they would personally escort me right to the to the room yep. and lock me in. Okay, listen, in? Okay, good, good, good. You need anything? <laughs> Bye, and I would never get to hang out. It was fun 90% of the time, but that other 10% was like, come on, let me go have fun. By 1987, Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam returned back to the studio to record their second album. It was called Spanish Fly. With Full Force delivering new songs, the new lyrics and vibe came off with a different vibe than the freestyle they had in the past. They released their first single off the album called Head to Toe. What is this? Come on, just sing it, sing it, Lisa, sing it. I was like, okay, and it sounded like a Supreme song, you know? Because Full Force wanted to add a little bit of a soul to it, when they got on stage, they added a little bit of Latin to it. Head to Toe went to number one on the dance, R&B, and pop charts, followed by another number one pop hit, Lost in Emotion. Hit the beat now. Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam did it again. Another hit single, and it's time for them to hit the road again. Some guys will promise you a marriage made in heaven. They put together a national show, and here they played at Radio City Music Hall. Now they got two straight number one singles in a platinum album that ran up the charts. Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam seemed to have it all. And here comes another single, their third single off the Spanish Fly album, co-wrote by Lisa Lisa and Paul Anthony. It almost seems like Full Force was moving the Coat Jam further away from the star, Lisa Lisa, and making their way in by slowly replacing the original look with Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam to Lisa Lisa in full force. And like this video, the Coat Jam was nowhere to be found. I think that was the worst video experience. I really felt like we were fighting to be in that video. Are we gonna be shown in the videos? They show a little glimpse of us, you know? And it didn't feel good. Best believe the Colt Jam had a problem with this because they noticed that their image was disappearing from all the music videos and less input on the music making decisions. A little jacket. A little Full Force had a lot to do with Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam's rise. But when the first single of their next album pushed more towards the pop territory, the group slowly divided. Let's keep it real. You know, when we first came out with Lisa right from the gate, 
you know, the record company, yeah, maybe we should just make it Lisa Lisa. And we always said no, always said no. And with Mike and Al, we ourselves sometimes would have to fight for them to be in the video, so fight for them to be their cult jam. Had Al and Mike, we should have set them up in their own genre to succeed as well, despite the record company. We can't study how they, we know how they flow, they're typical, they're typical, let's make Lisa the star and push those two guys to the side. And the record company's plan did just that. Making Lisa Lisa the star and pushing the cult jam to the side. So with this next follow-up album, Straight to the Sky, came another single called Little Jackie. Following their plan to make Lisa Lisa the only star, the single, the album, didn't do as good as they thought. And because the fans didn't respond to the new album, the record company refused to respond to the group. So as the record label failed, the record label support began to fail as well. They were 100% with us when Spanish Fly was taken off like a rocket, you know, and when that didn't happen with um, Straight to the Sky, that all shut down. Although the group was having problems with their record company, Lisa Lisa had problems of her own. After getting married at the age of 19, during her success and rise of her career, her marriage was starting to fall apart. I had the big wedding, I had the fairy tale, I had it all, but there was always something missing. And in reality, what was missing is the reality of it. You know, do you really love me for me? Her marriage falling apart was just a little of the problems that she had. At the age of 20, Lisa Lisa discovered a bruise under her breast. It turns out to be cancer. She continued to go on tour and do all her performance, and she was sick at the time while doing it. In between all those performances, Lisa would head over for treatment for her cancer. Luckily, her treatments were successful, and her cancer went into remission. And it's been that way for over 20 years. My doctor said, that I had cancer. They think they caught it early and it's best that I immediately go into treatment. So I had chemo and radiation back to back. Meanwhile, through it all, the song Little Jackie never even made it to the pop charts. The single didn't land good with the fans at all, which sent Lisa Lisa in the Coat Jam career in a downward spiral. With the group fame going down, the money started going down, and the group started asking questions. They started asking questions about where's all the money going and who's responsible. One of the people that was on the questioning list was Full Force. Not because they wanted to believe they had something to do with their money, but they did believe by full force showing their image along with their group while performing and being in their music videos may have confused the fans they built up over the time of who was really the stars. The full force was our management, but they were also in our videos and all that stuff. I just thought it was just a little overbearing for people to understand. I thought they should have been you know, full force and we should have been Lisa Lisa Cult Jam because it, it confused a lot of people. And that's not me saying that, that's people saying that to me. On top of that, things got more confusing. In 1991, Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam went to the studio just to find out the record company had a whole new idea. And that idea was to bring in a few producers. They were known by the name of CNC Music Factory. The plan was to put out an album with CNC Music Factory producing one whole side. This will confuse everyone even more. Rock the house, y'all. And to make things even worse, Lisa and one of the guys from CNC Factory was starting to get a little too close. Although things was going on between those two, CNC Music Factory end up putting Lisa Lisa in the Coat Jam back on the map with Let the Beat Hit Him. It was scary for me. And I think it was kind of weird for the guys too, you know, to go in there and work differently. 
Now it's like, okay, you know, we need a fresh look at this. But this was kind of imposed. I think when it did a Cavellas Cole album side and Boyd Allen's side, that creates dissension even if there's not dissension. That's dumb. Let the Beat Hit Em drove all the way up to number one on the R&B and dance charts. But this would be the group's last hit single. As new talent came through the doors, the focus from the record labels was no longer on Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam. And with the lack of success of the album, the group members of Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam started to fall apart. It was the end of the group, but not the end of Lisa Lisa's career. Several years later, Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam get back together to do a show again. And although the group members split up, all three of them did things to further their career within the entertainment industry. But before then, in 1994, she did attempt to be a solo artist and came out with a slight hit, but didn't do as much when it was Lisa Lisa and the Coat Jam. Eventually, Lisa Lisa kind of faded away from the music industry, but that was all gonna change, not the music, her career. 2001, Lisa landed an acting gig on a TV show on Nickelodeon. It was about the Latin life. You feeling sick? <laughs> no, I'm saving my voice. Why? <laughs> I'm going to break a world record for singing and dancing? The TV show was called Kaina, where she played a Latin mom. From there, she went from being a mom on TV to being a mom in real life as she got married to one of her dancers and been together living happily ever after with her kids. I hope you enjoyed this story. My name is Antoine. Thank you for watching Urban TV On Demand. Make sure you check out more videos like this on our channel.